Lab COV, the second generation. See, the thing is, this is an animal virus that could not infect humans, and they worked very hard for decades in the lab trying to get it to do so. 15% of colds were caused by the COV. It did not, uh, it was not able to infect cells through the ACE2 receptors, kind of used the fusion state kind of in the nose, came from cows, pigs, and um, they, what happened was uh, in the 1980s, University of North Carolina collaborated with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And they had an exchange student program between their laboratories and Barrick, who was direct, who is now director of the University of North Carolina Labs, has been. He is the one that was passing the coronaviruses through cell cultures, such as the varro cells, the renal kidney cells of the monkeys, which are epithelial cells, um, which are the inner skin cells that contain the ACE2 receptors. He's passing it through live mice. He's passing it through all kinds of things. And Dashak, in 1998, Dashak has, is, he, Peter Dashak is going into caves looking for the Nipah virus. Um, the, in 1997, the rhinophilus bat, which is the source of this virus, had all its caves mapped in China. And now Barrick is teaching out of the University of North Carolina a coronavirus pathogenesis program. He, that means to cause disease, pathogenesis. And he has graduates that are basically learn, learning how to turn COV into COVID, infectious disease. So they're returning to China and working on what he does. He noticed that persistent infection causes cross-species transmission. This is Ralph Barrick's quote. And sure enough, the ACE2 receptors that are on the epithelial cells that are the inner, which is the inner skin of your body, it is the cardio system, your, your blood vessels, it's your gastrointestinal tract, it's um, your, the, the uterus, the testes, it's your kidneys, it's your lungs. They've got these ACE2 receptors that are very important for the angiotensin tensing kind of balance in your body. It has so many functions. Um, that's another chapter. And they trained these coronaviruses to be able to, like a key in a lock, enter in through the ACE2 cells, on um, the epithelial cells. But what they really want to do to make it go from um, COVID, COV to COVID, they want to pass it through a live human. Um, it needs its first passage. It will not be terribly infectious. Uh, it will be virulent, but it will. It needs its first human passage. So that's what they do. They release it in 2002 in the ghetto of Guangzhou in Guangdong by Hong Kong, and the most virulent strain that they can find, Dr. Urbani's, who dies outside of China, so it's sent off to the CDC, he's the face of SARS-1, the first generation. And you know you're looking at the right um, virus if you're looking at the ascension numbers that got listed here, and it has in, in 2003, they were just learning, they had been involved in genomics for years, but they were finally able to read the human genome completely, and then they got into the COV genome for the first time. And the base pairs of the Urbani is 29,727, that's how you know you're looking at the right one. And they then, so Urbani virus is then passed through mice. Barrick is doing this, it's called mouse adapted, the virus is adapted to mice. He loved playing with this. And then you got she working with him. They're recombining. It's called recombination. And recombination is a gain of function. And this is what the University of North Carolina was doing, which then passed off to the Wuhan Institute of Virology um, that then built in 2015 a BSL four lab, which means biosafety level number four, the highest level, which they finally built for the first time in China, in Wuhan. And they're then continuing this work. They're, Dashak and she are collecting lots of bat, rhinophilus bat 
samples that contain very agreeable viruses that when they run them all, they're all passage through aerosols. Once they're all passed through these ACE2 receptor cells repeatedly, um, the really good behaving ones then become good candidates for their recombinant vaccines um, and viruses that they're building for these vaccines. So here we have the, they, they love the, their number one, WIV number one. And then they settled on WIV-16 and made a chimera with Urbani spikes plus WIV-16. Um, but So you've got the spikes, which is about 4% of the genome. It's very important. This is what is going to do the lock and key. And they love their Urbani strain because you ran through the home human population. It's very good at it. It's um, exactly what they want. So these are the spikes. And then the WIV-16 is what they call the backbone. That's the rest of it. It's ninety-six percent of it, and then you're getting a new species, and this is gain of function, um, for sure. So they then, again, tired of running it through the Vera monkey cells, so they run it through a human population, and this human population is now uh, with the antivirals that are available that will block the. ACE2 receptors, which is a problem in itself, but it would make it feasible then to release it yet again in near, right there in Wuhan to have a, yet again a second generation of this virus running through um, live human. And, and um, so the first one they have on record is the Wuhan human number one, um, which they abbreviated to HU the first one, human number one. And then they, and they I just say homo sapiens. I don't know why. They do not say where it came from. Um, I believe though that this is their second generation. What they're really looking for is something like the WIV-02. The very next one is, is, is from a hospital and it's one that they've, that they're all working on. You can see these in their gen bank numbers including even beyond these that were collected, the Wuhan Who One was collected, um, they're all collected in December of 2019, but it was submitted on the 5th of January. Um, I, WIV02 submitted on the 27th, and you've got then this mutant strain that follows that is put together by Barak Shi Dajak. It's a mutant SARS-CoV, they say, and they're using SHC014 for the spikes, which is the Shanghai Center that Zhang is the director of, and they're using the backbone of the mouse-adapted ones for this, and you can see that. And these codes are being sold online. They're using reverse genetics so that Barrick, who is selling them and other people are, he resurrected a dead virus GD03. Here's GD01, basically ground zero, the first one in Guangdong. And 03 has been resurrected through reverse genetics to synthetic viruses that can replicate. And um, it is no longer extinct. So this is just the beginning, shocking of all shocking things. Um, I'm following the footsteps. It's an outline that will have more details added to it as we uncover how this came to be. And all I can say is, wow. Thank you.